So, is the next generation of iPhone really worth the eight? I just upgraded from an iPhone 5 to an iPhone 7 Plus just under a year ago, and there's no way that I'm gonna upgrade anytime soon. Something tells me that the iPhone 8 Plus is really just a spec bump 7 Plus, but you never know what you might find until you get inside, so let's get this teardown started and find out. Apple said the iPhone 8 Plus was microscopically sealed, to which we said, challenge accepted. The opening procedure hasn't changed much from the 7 Plus, and as promised, the 8 Plus is loaded with adhesives and rubber gaskets to protect your phone from water and dust down to the microscopic level. But the iPhone 8 Plus is just as water resistant as the 7 Plus, with an IP rating of 67, which still doesn't beat the Galaxy S8's IP68 score. So to remove the display, I first gotta remove this bracket. I'm happy to see that there aren't any tri-point screws in here like there were in the 7 Plus, but it looks like we're gonna have to deal with those later on. The display on the iPhone 8 Plus has the same resolution and pixel density as the iPhone 7 Plus, but the 8 Plus now has True Tone technology, which makes it easier for you to read what's on your screen in bright sunlight. The True Tone technology works with the ambient light sensors in the 8 to detect the color temperature of the lighting around you, and then changes the color temperature of the display to match. Apple's website literally says that the charge and capacity of the iPhone 8 Plus's battery is about the same as the iPhone 7 Plus, but what we're really excited about are these four pull tab adhesive strips that should help you easily remove the battery if and when you need to replace it. I didn't have such good luck with the adhesive strips on the iPhone 8. Hopefully I have a little better luck with these next this time. Well, apparently my luck has run out. I had two pull tabs break off before I could even start pulling them, one that broke off mid-pull, and one that was a relative success. If this happens to you, you might have to pull out your tweezers to dig out the adhesive, and if that doesn't work, you're gonna have to resort to heating and prying. I'm gonna use my tweezers to try to get these things out one more time. Let's see what happens. So I had to resort to a little heating and prying to get the battery out, but what I ended up with was a 3.82 volt, 2,691 milliamp hour cell providing 10.28 watt hours of power. To remove the two rear facing cameras, we had to remove two tripoints, one Phillips, and a standoff screw. The pair of 12 megapixel cameras are fixed together, so that way the software used for portrait mode can combine the images from both lenses. The dual cameras on the iPhone 8 have the same number of megapixels as the iPhone 7 Plus, but more megapixels isn't necessarily better. The sensor here is the key. The 12 megapixel sensor provides 80% more light and is more power efficient than in the previous model. Removing the logic board is a bit of a mini mission. You've got tons of cables and brackets and Phillips screws, and Apple has seemed to fall in love with the standoff screw. They even included a hidden one in there for you to find, but once you find that one, the logic board lifts right out. We've got the full chip ID over on the teardown, but on it you'll find the A11 Bionic chip, which feels directly aimed at augmented reality. Remember not too long ago when you could swap your speaker without first removing the logic board? We remember. How about when you could remove the Taptic engine without first removing the speaker? Yep, we remember that too. While we're happy that many components remain modular, the new layout and placement seems like a near impossible game of pickup sticks. So the new glass back is interesting. Not only is it home to the Qi wireless charging coil, but underneath the coil is the Apple logo that's embedded in the middle of the glass. So minor scratches won't mar the logo at all. Backing the glass is a metal frame that provides structural support and should make it more durable. Based on Apple's patent filings, I think they might be using some kind of liquid metal nano coating, which would be pretty sweet, but unfortunately we don't have the equipment to verify that. But regardless of whether they're using liquid metal, the back is glass and it's going to break, as you can see here, here, and here. Repairability for this phone is more important than any phone since the iPhone 4S, which is why we've got one more thing, the score. The iPhone 8 Plus earned a six out of 10 on our repairability scale, and here's why. The display and battery are straightforward to access with the proper knowledge and tools. Wireless charging means less wear on the all-purpose lightning port, a common point of failure. Water and dust seals complicate repair, but make the need for difficult liquid damage repairs less likely. The battery connector still uses common Phillips JIS fasteners, but you'll still need up to four different drivers for many repairs. 
and despite alleged durability, the back glass is breakable and next to impossible to replace when cracked. And lastly, the iPhone's lower components, once readily removed, now lie trapped under a fussy combination of brackets and delicately folded flex cables. So, was the iPhone 8 Plus everything you thought it would be? All of our Apple teardowns are just getting started, so if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, follow us on Twitter at iFixit, and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit. I'll see you soon.